Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully everything is working. Looks like it is. Good shape for the most part. Let me just adjust that down a bit. Not sure why that's wonky. There we go. Hey, hello, Sparks, Prelt, Martimus. Hello, hello, one and all. Hope you're all doing well. So let me switch that back up over here so I can actually see things. Hello, Raiders. Hello, 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 Val. Welcome in. Uh, welcome in. Um, I'm sorry, I was very, very lurky today, so I don't actually know what you were up to. Um, oh, right, it was Naked Link today, wasn't it? Um, that's correct, I remember. Hi, Val. Hello, Amalia. Uh, Mermaid. Uh, Ronin. Hello, hello. Meridu. Hi, good to see you. Uh, welcome in, welcome in. As Wow, the bot's just really doing the work right now. Um, see us. Val and Mermaid and... Nikki Link today normally have a tweet for Twitter just reviews. I've I've been so I have been hearing. So I have been hearing. Uh Cassiopeia, welcome in, welcome in. Hello, hello. Um, and yes, so hi, for those who don't know me from Val's stream, hi, I'm Chris Kinnears, aka the painting pirate. He can pronounce variety stream a miniature painter. And I have been very very kindly sponsored by Atomic Mass Games to do some streams to help promote their new skirmish game, Star Wars Shatterpoint, which I've been doing a little bit on my own anyway, because I genuinely really like it. Um, but this is now like they have officially sponsored the stream, so it's very kind of them. So as Sahana just pointed out in chat, yes, there is a link there, um, which is actually, it's a new and updated link, uh, fresh for this set of streams. So... If you are curious about Star Wars Shatterpoint and want to see all the amazing stuff they have coming out for it that is out currently, um, it's been out for a couple of weeks now, but they have extensive plans to release more stuff over the coming months. Um, I'm very, very excited about it. There's some stuff I will absolutely be picking up myself, um, including a, a, a squad pack that I have my eyes laser focused on because it's Cad Bane and I love Cad Bane. I love Cad Bane to an unhealthy degree. So I am very, very excited for that one. Uh, also, there's a General Grievous pack coming out, and I just want that so I can paint all the lightsabers. That's fun. Um, but yes, hi, hello. Hope the stream went well, Val. Um, again, sorry, I had to be very, very lurky. It's been a day. It's been a week. Um, but yeah, so what we are going to be doing today is um so i've already painted these clone troopers i've done that but i have more to paint because i was commissioned by a friend of mine to paint his star wars shatterpoint core set as well so that's what i'm doing so not only do you get to see me follow up my own paint recipe so we get to find out how well i built that because now i get to i have to follow my own instructions so that's going to be interesting but I also, um, I'm doing commission work, which I don't normally do on camera, um, or really much at all. So this is kind of new and uh, new and different. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, hope everyone in, I hope everyone in the US is, is, as I am, staring down the barrel of a long weekend. Um, I actually, for various reasons, I'm now staring down the barrel of a four-day weekend, which is quite nice. My, uh, my office is going to be closed Monday and Tuesday, so I've got four days off to, uh, to catch up on everything after it's been a time but yeah getting caught up on everything which is going to involve a lot of me hopefully painting my own shatter point set because i've got a good way through it um i'm almost done with the mandalorians or well the death watch mandos and i can paint darth maul which i'm very excited to do um and i think what i really have left from the core is uh is um ahsoka and uh bo katan's clan Kree's group my job is open Monday, but closed it. Yeah, that's what mine was originally going to do, but we have Monday off now. So, um, And I've realized the nice thing about having the paint recipe to follow through is, oh, I can prepare, I can set my paints out. Like, I know the paints I'm going to need. This is new and different for me. So, actually, I'm going to need another one. I just realized I'm sure to paint. I'm going to grab this one. There we go. Uh, because... I am mostly following my recipe. Hey, Panther, welcome in. Thank you very much for the resub. I really appreciate that. Um, 
So, this is my recipe. This is the commission part. Because I painted my clone troopers as, you know, they're members of the 501st, so they got the blue art, the blue markings. And we're still going to have the blue markings on there as well. But the request I got for the commission went a little deeper than that. Um, I'm going to try to describe this without going too spoilery, but late in the Clone Wars series, certain members of the 501st start adding orange markings on their helmets. So beyond, so we're going to have the standard markings across the body, but then I do the, I'm going to be doing the helmets slightly differently because I'm going to be doing the orange markings that they do late in the series. So that'll be a, an interesting and fun challenge for me because they look quite intricate. So, oh, no worries, Panther. Enjoy the lurk. Totally appreciate you showing up and doing the thing. Doing the thing is always appreciated. Um, but yeah. Oh, if you are interested, by the way, in seeing the paint recipe or the, 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 the paint list cards, um, they're not only available on my Twitter, but they are available on my website, uh, paintingpirate.com, which isn't just a thing Stephen occasionally sings. It actually exists. Paintingpirate.com does exist. Uh, there's a blog on there where, where I posted up a more detailed run through of some of these. And uh, you can find, I don't know if I've done, I don't know if I've actually put the clone troopers up on there yet. Um, if I haven't, they'll be up there soon. So let me clear some stuff out of the way. And let me ask, how is everyone doing? How's your weekend been? How was stream, Val? How was running around in Tears of the Kingdom as Neki Link? Oh, and I also do have some... Uh, thank you, guys, for hit the, the bot button, Sahana. Let me also... I prep the music. So, okay, that might be a little loud. If it is, well, it's a little loud, so I'm going to crank that down. I think that looks a little better. Let me know if that's still too loud. Um, I was like, why am I, tur I'm turning the music button. Why is the music volume not going down? It's because I'm going through my browser. Um, because I know that various friends have been having issues with, um, music that is supposed to be copyright free, but hasn't been getting copyright free. So rather than using any additional service, I wanted some kind of ambient spacey music. So I'm using, uh, the YouTube audio library because I'm going to put this up as a VOD later on. So people who want to see it can kind of follow through. Wipe down just a wee bit the wet palette because there's a little too much dampness on the surface. All right. Bop, bop, bop. Where did I just put that? There we go. So hopefully that means when I upload the VOD to YouTube, I won't have any copyright issues. Nice and shook up. Ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba. Now I didn't have when I was when I was doing these for the first time for my set. I realized I didn't have a great um, what's the word I'm looking for. I didn't have a good um, off white that I wanted to use for the armor because just plain white is is too bright, and I wanted to look a little dingy and you know not flawless because you know they're 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 troopers. They've been fighting for a very long time. It shouldn't be pristine white. So what I'm doing is a 50-50 mix of um, Monument Hobbies Bold Titanium White, which is my absolute favorite white paint. And then um, Administratum Grey from Citadel. Well, that's the thing with, with, with what Pretzel has been going through. Pretzel is the service I'm, I'm alluding to. They've been going through a thing lately. It's not their fault. Um, I, like, it seems almost that somebody is copyright trolling them. And the, the and copyright claiming a bunch of stuff that isn't that they have the legal rights to do. Like people using the service have the right to use it for stream, but they're getting copyright trolled. And unfortunately, how that manifests is it's the streamer who gets dinged. So whilst Pretzel are doing what they can, because of the way copyright stuff works, you have to kind of go through and you know um contest them one at a time and so and they're not a huge company so they they only have so much that they can do with it so 
Unfortunately, the safer thing for streamers to do is just not use the service until that's resolved. It's not entire, it's not necessarily Pretzel's fault. It's they're getting hit by this, and because there aren't great ways to contest it, that's just sort of the way it goes. I mean, we've seen on on this very channel before. I have been copyright ding for the sound of the ocean before. Um, unfortunately, copyright trolls are a thing, and automated copyright systems make it entirely too easy for them to to be trolls. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with just going over, and on my initial recipe, I actually primed these in a grey. Uh, a darker gray. I've done it slightly differently this time. I've primed them in a much lighter gray. Just zoom in a bit there so we can get some look. That should be fine. Um, I've also tweaked quite a few camera settings. So hopefully that works well. Because um, I wanted to get... I've been playing around a little bit with the DSLR trying to figure out what are the best settings to use for mini painting. I realized on a lot of my streams of late, the camera's been kind of wonky and not looking too great. And I realized what I had accidentally done was severely lower the frame rate on it. So, yes, clone troopers, cleaning up the members of the 501st. Of course, under the command of General Anakin Skywalker, who Anakin is going to be who we paint next week. Um, I don't have to be too careful with these because we're just now I'm just going to keep This is just the initial thing. And what I've done is I've glued them onto temporary bases with just a little dab of super glue. Because I don't have I haven't gone through and and done the bases for this this commission project yet. Um so I'm going to do those all at once. So right now they're just glued to temporary bases. Um, I've realized what I did do as well. Um, so this morning I went outside and I, I used a rattle can primer for these, which I regret doing. Because I don't think I it was a rattle can I'd had sitting around for a while. And if you look very closely, especially on this back leg, you can kind of see this like bumpy texture. Um, and that's because I didn't shake it properly. So I, I may kind of scrape that off and redo that later on. Have the, yeah, Anakin, I have the high ground. Do you underestimate my power? <laughs> yes, Obi-Wan has taught you well. I am, uh, that's actually one of the sets that they have coming out very soon that I'm going to be picking up is they have an Obi-Wan versus Darth Vader dual set, which has a nice fancy little like diorama base set of terrain with it really really wanting to paint that up so i'm going to be buying that for myself good thing clone troopers are used to moving from base to base hey the dumb tish yeah i wanted to the reason i and i kind of went back i i went back and forth a little bit chatting with my rep uh, who i've been working with at atomic mass games because i'm going to be doing four of these sponsored streams speaking of atomic mass games hello welcome in um, and what we decided to do was we're going to do the Clone Troopers and Anakin and the Mandalorians and more. And the reason we're doing this way around is painting the Clone Trooper armor is going to be a technique that applies throughout huge amounts of the range. It'll be the same technique for Stormtrooper armor when they eventually, because they're going to be doing additional... Um, like time periods of the canon like we as i just said we've already got a uh, darth vader versus obi-wan dual pack coming out in the imminent future so i'm sure there will be packs in future which involve stormtroopers the armor will work the same for them um and similarly you got this you got the members of the 501st in the in the core set you've already got the hello there pack which the name of that pack by the way was one of the things that immediately sold me on Shatterpoint. It's like, oh, you're leaning into the memes. I'm in support. Um, but there's also a, uh, a pack coming out that has 
sign uh, has go it's going to have um, commando troopers in. So getting like this kind of basic white armor down is going to be extremely useful for anything in the range for the most part. And then like white armor shows up fairly consistently. Like I used I, I used the same thing for the white armor that Obi Wan has or along his his chest his chest. Um, and then for Mandalorians and Maul, I mean. The recipe I've worked out for the Mandalorians can work for literally any Beskar armor. So I'm going to be painting Death Watch, but it'll be the same recipe baseline for the, the Clan Kree's Mandos and any other Mandalorians that eventually wind up in the range. Like I, for example, will be genuinely, genuinely shocked if at some point there is not a squad pack released that centers around, say, Din Djarin. And really, the recipe I've come up with for the Mandalorians is paint everything like Din Djarin and then just slap paint over it. And it works out remarkably well. And then Maul is a good use because it completes that squad and Maul is predominantly a lot of black robes. And black robes are also a very common feature within any Star Wars model, like Vader. Ben Swolo. Um, in case there's ever, I don't know, Darth Sidious might show up at some point. I don't know. Um, black robes show really consistently. So I think that'll be a nice thing to, to focus on and get some good techniques that are going to work for a huge amount of things in the room. And I think that the, the base recipes would also probably work for a lot of stuff in Shatterpoint. Not Shatterpoint, sorry, excuse me, Star Wars Legion as well. It's just on a smaller scale, but really the paint recipe should be the same thing. It's, it's the base coloration that matters there. So we're going to get that down. So I think that's good enough, see, for that first coat. And we can kind of compare, even with just the base grey, we've now got that much more vibrant white which we're going to dull back down, but that's a good uh, that's a good clone trooper one. We're going to make it all dinged up, dinged up, and and battle scarred later on, uh, which is going to be especially important for the period in the canon where this commission was requested to take place. Um, which we didn't talk about that, um, dear beloved AMG rep, but the. Uh, I was specifically asked for this commission to paint the 501st late in the series after they apply certain orange face markings to their helmets um, and we'll be going with snow themed bases. And I'm not going to elaborate on that further because of potential because of spoilers for the Clone Wars series but if you know you know. And if you don't know, honestly, go watch Clone Wars. It's great. I didn't watch it before starting this project. And I marathoned it. Like, I got deep into it. I got real deep into it. Hey, smoke bit. Real deep. Um, and it has honestly now given me some of my absolute favorite characters in the Star Wars canon. Which obviously very much includes Ahsoka, who is fantastic. But again, Ad Bane. I love Ad so much. He is irredeemably terrible, but incredibly stylish about it. Um, Ahsoka, yeah, I'm very excited. I, I was already looking forward to the new Ahsoka series. Now I'm really excited for it really excited for it. Um, now that I know more about the character, what I have not done yet is I have, I'm still, I'm still slowly working my way through the Bad Batch and I haven't started Rebels yet. That's next on the list. Um, 
I love the Bad Batch too, and I'm very much hoping that they make it in as a, as a squad pack as well at some point, because come on, they're perfectly suited for a squad. I, I would be very surprised if at some point that doesn't happen. Hey, Banana Mobster, welcome in, welcome in. Like, that's been a lot of my, my thinking of, okay, ever since I started diving into Shadowpoint, it's been, okay, well, what are future squads going to be? Like, my... I've been theory crafting a lot of this. Um, we know for a fact there are going to be Ewoks. Ewoks are getting a squad pack. Ewoks just got added to Star Wars Legion. There's going to be... There's going to be Ewoks in Shatterpoint. Um... A squad that's coming up that I want to pick up and paint um, because it's going to be a challenge for me. Um, it's one that I'm very, very excited for. And I don't remember the name of the squad, but if you click the if you click that link, um, do exclamation mark Shatterpoint in in um, in chats to get the link to, to all the info. You'll find it fairly easily from that page, I'm sure. One of the upcoming squads is um, Amidala and her handmaidens. And I really want to paint that one. Because full episode one regalia Amidala is going to be an amazing paint project. Yeah, rabbit teddy bears, exactly. Now, what hasn't been announced and hasn't been added to Legion yet either, that I desperately, desperately, desperately want them to add. Jawas. I want Jawas. You can't see it. And there's no way I can really shift to the camera to show it off, unfortunately. But above my desk up here is a... Actually, you know what? I might be able to show it off with this. Hold on. I want to show, see if I can... There we go. Try not to break everything on my other desk. There we go. I don't know how well you can see that piece of artwork up there. But it is a sketch of Jarwitz using a decapitated astromech as a beer cooler going martini um i bought that at dragon con several several years ago i think i actually may have bought that at my first ever dragon con um and it is one of my favorite pieces of artwork i own um, my favorite thing about that is because I bought it at Dragon Con, it's actually, it not only is it signed by the artist, the artist did a little extra sketch on it, and there's a Jawa being pulled along by a landspeeder, riding on like a parasail. Squalls? But yes, I, uh, oh yeah, you also, no, it's on one side, I have a Babs Tar Squall, and on the other side of that is another one of my favorite pieces of art that I own, which is another Babs Tar piece which is, um, actually, I don't think, I'm sorry, that one's not Babs, I forget who did, is it Babs? Yeah, who did that one? I think it might be another Babs type piece, but it's, it's Caduceus and Molly in like a, a playing card style, one on top, one on bottom. Looks real cool. My office has some real cool, real, real nice um, artwork in it. Yes, of course I have a school piece on my on my wall. Of course I do. Similarly, Pride of Place behind me on that wall is my collection of Crystal Fae Final Fantasy prints, of which the FF8 one has Pride of Place, but I've also got the ones for 6, 9, and uh, I think seven's the other one I got over there. I say that I can't, like I can't just look behind me and check, but I want to keep 
getting all of this paint on before it starts to dry and I wind up with streaks. So yeah, very, very excited um, for more stuff. I say I want, I, I want Jawas. I've talked about this on the previous streams before. Well, I would really love to see, and it doesn't, it doesn't work super well for a skirmish game like this. Like, you'd have to change a bunch of rules around for it. But I like the idea of going, okay, here's one side that has their, um, exactly, you can't have a streaking clone troop. Um, so you've got one side that's, you've got your leader, your sub-leader, and your, your troops, right? That's your standard squad for shot point. I would love it if you could have one side that like has that, but the other side's just one model, boom, it's a Rancor. Just get, I, I just want to paint a Rancor in the scale, to be honest. Like that's all I want to do. Alright, and so that's the base troops done. Speaking of subleader, I have the subleader for this set, which is gonna be Rex. I'm doing him at the same time. Because, I mean, why not? His armor is identical. So there's no reason to not just do Rex at the same time as the rest of them. Um, I haven't built it yet, but the uh, the commission also includes the, the Hello There pack. So I'm going to go through and do these for... Um, I think it's the 212th that is with Obi-Wan. The ones that have the yellow squad markings. And has Commander Cody with them. But... Uh, Rex is also going to be a bit easier to paint for me this time around because, thankfully, the way this commission was requested, um, because the, the core set does come with alternate build options for se several of the, the models. And in many cases, the alternate build options are helmet on, helmet off. Oh yeah, Rex's pauldron is, is real nice. Um, I In all of the cases, uh, he requested me to do them with the helmets on. Which is nice for me, because that means I don't have as many faces to paint. In fact, I think for this set, the only... Well, for the core set, that means the only standard human face I have to paint is Anakin. Um, I still have to paint um, Maul and oops, Ahsoka but, and Ventress. But those aren't, you know, standard human skin tone faces, so. And I wanted to be very, very careful with getting the skin tone right on the clone troopers because I wanted to try to... It, it, it's one thing to do just like mini skin tones, I think, are something that you need to... Everyone should pay attention to and, you know, paint your minis. I mean, paint your minis however you want, but you'll have a better looking collection of minis and grow as a painter if you diversify the skin tones in your in your mini collection. And I've been very thankful to see some of the larger companies moving in a way in a way of having very clear non-Caucasian racial coding for some of the minis they've been putting out of late. Um, but that's very the case of I, I'm blanking on his name now, but the actor who plays um Django Fett and now Boba. Hey DC um Tamura Morris Tamura Morris because the clones are clones of Django Fett I wanted to try to get as close as I could to Tamura Morrison's actual skin tone because I felt that felt that just felt respectful to me like it's it's him they are based that the appearance is based on a real person and therefore it feels appropriate for me to try to get as close to his skin tone as possible which I did I figured out a recipe for it but I don't have to now mimic that recipe for these because I'm painting them all with the helmets on so that makes my life a little easier because painting painting faces honestly can take as long as painting the entire rest of the mini and arguably should because there's such a focal point um like if you're going to spend a bunch of time on any part of the mini make it the face make it where the eyes are drawn But that's, again, why I'm happy I don't have to paint as many faces, because that means I don't have to paint as many eyes. 
His eyes are the bane of my existence. Unfortunately, not the cat bane. Ayo! Um, that was low effort. Don't even ding that. Don't, don't even applaud that one. That was terrible. That was lazy. Not up to my usual standards. The eyes do not have it. See, go for Sah Sahana made a good pun. You can, you can give you can give the badum dish to Sahana for that. That was good. I don't. I'm being a little careful just to make just because it's good practice. But I don't have to worry overly much about oversplash on these because I'm going to be doing black next, so which is why I'm doing it in this order. Is if I splash white onto an area, it's not supposed to be cool. That's easy to cover up because I'm next going to be doing black. If I splash black onto an area that's supposed to be white, that is uh, much more difficult to fix. It's not impossible, it just takes way more coats. And as always, multiple thin coats is the way to go because it doesn't obscure detail. And these are some delightfully, delightfully detailed minis. And in fact, um, I talked about I talked about this a little bit, I think in a few discords, and I may have mentioned it on whether I can't remember if I've discussed it on stream or not. One of my favorite things I've experienced working with the Shatterpoint. Hold on. Difficulty level walking closet, way more coats. Sahana, you're on a roll today. Just well done. I've been, I haven't I, I missed streams this week and I've missed this. I've missed you. Um But as I was saying, one of the things I came to learn working on the Shatterpoint minis is they're in a slightly larger scale than I'm used to working in. Um because usually I work in a 28 millimeter scale. And I think these are in, I want to say, 32 mil, which doesn't sound like a huge difference, right? It doesn't sound like a huge difference. But what I learned is that working in the slightly larger scale, for me, clicked a few um, techniques I've been trying to do in the 28 mil scale that I was really struggling with. And just moving into the slightly larger scale helped me realize what it is I was doing wrong. So, genuinely, I know it's a sponsored segment. This is not just marketing spiel. This is my honest, unbiased opinion. I have become a better painter by working on these because just shifting out of the mindset of where I was struggling really helped. Hey, Cypher, welcome in, welcome in, Raiders. Hello, hello, hello. Were you, did, did you... Did you beat the Ifrit? I hope everyone's doing well. Welcome in. For those who don't know me from the Cyphers Raid, hi, I am Chris Kinnears, aka the Painting Pirate, he, him, pronouns, variety streamer, miniature painter. And today we are working on a set of clone troopers from Star Wars Shatterpoint, who very, very kindly sponsored the stream. You had to redo the Ifrit fight? I mean, at least it's a good fight to have to redo. But hopefully you, you got through it. Um, Welcome in, welcome in. Hello, Melissa. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. Uh, for the iconic raid. You did. Excellent. Well done. It's a, it's a hell of a scene. Just, I was, I haven't put the VODs up yet because my, I have been somewhat distracted with other things this week, but uh, I do have to get the VODs processed for my own FF16 playthrough. Um, and, when those go up, you'll be able to watch me doing that fight and absolutely um, freaking out over how cool I think it is. So, hey, Malavant, welcome, welcome. All right. So now, so we've got those bases on. We're going to now slap on the old Corvus Black, um, which is a sli it's slightly lighter than a pure base black.
Um, which for the under for the Under Armour, I didn't want to go super dark with it. Um, just because I think it looks a little better without being pitch pitch black. I like just that little element of kind of. I don't know if off black is the term. I know off white is a thing. I don't know if there's a corresponding like off black. It's a slight element of grey to it that I think works well. But like underarm things that you don't want to be. Like super dark black is good for. Oh, you can see there I flipped and got a little bit of. I got a little bit of black on the groin. I'll fix that later. Coffee tables, no disaster. Yeah, I know the feeling. That was actually part of my morning, was trying to get some of my apartment back under some semblance of control. And that's, a, that's going to be a significant part of my weekend too. Especially now that my original plans for tomorrow have been cancelled. Because my original plans for tomorrow were to sell my car. Um, and I got an email just before stream started, actually, saying that they were rescheduling that to Wednesday. It's like, well, crap, okay. That's fine. That's great. But that's okay, because I can still go dig it out the garage, and hopefully that means then with Monday and Tuesday being a holiday, what I can do is go... And well, it, it, it works out in a certain weird way, because they're going to have to come pick it up from my apartment. So what this means is, on Monday, Tuesday, when many people are going to be out and about for the holiday, and, significantly, when alternate side parking will be suspended in New York City, the odds of me being able to find parking for it by my apartment go way up. And in my neighborhood, you don't have to do alternate side parking on Wednesdays. It's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So in the grand scheme of things, it might, because before I was going to have to go and try and get the car out tomorrow and then either find a place to park it or leave it right outside my apartment in front of the fire hydrant and just kind of spend a, spend a few hours acting like no no I, I'm, I'm cleaning it it's what I'm doing definitely definitely not just trying to bypass the parking no um but yeah I I, I went through a company that's just like we'll just we will buy your car from you because I just want it gone um because I am in the process of planning on that move, and it will not be able to come with me. So... Alright, so we got those. Fortunately for the clone troopers, there isn't too much black to do. Just gonna get... Mm. Little part there. Where's my knife? Quite seen that correctly, so. What that is, is a wee bit.
going to no longer be streaming on Saturdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. I am instead going to be streaming on Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, because, as of today, I believe, one Space Valkyries is no longer going to be streaming on Saturdays. So I've stolen the slot. Vicious Space Pirate that I am. Definitely, definitely stole it. I did. It was in no way coordinated between us. It was definitely, definitely not instantiated by Val themselves. Nope. Me being the vicious pirate I am, stole the slot. Um, but yeah, so your usual Team Cypher Saturdays will um, now instead go from Stephen to me. I mean, I assume. Stephen might go, ew, I don't want to raid pirate, let's go find somebody else. Which is entirely fine if he chooses to do that. I have no expectation there. But, you know, that'll be the usual time on Saturdays, because I, I found the earlier stream work real well for me. So that's what we'll be doing. Starting as of next week, um, with the caveat that after next week, um, there aren't going to be a, there's not going to be a Saturday stream the week after, because that's the week I'll be in LA. So we get to do a week on that new schedule and then immediately bail on. But after that, I'll be back, as per usual. LA fun times. Well, I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. Because this is my scouting trip for the eventual move, so hopefully it turns out that uh, I love it as much as I'm hoping I do. You know, just paint in the black part on the visor. I think that looks good. I actually want to go I'm gonna wheel over real quick and grab one of mine. Ah, so we can come back to here's one I prepared earlier. Gone full blue Peter with it. Okay, because I wanted to remember which were the parts on this that I did in black. Remember how the helmet works. So this is eventually where this is going to be going. That's what it's going to look like at the end, hopefully. Right. So let's get the little vent down the back, and then this line around the helmet. Cat meds complete. Congratulations. I don't see any double-sided sellotape. Hey. It's about right. I think the only other part I did was the little doobly bits in the back. So let's just dot in the dooblies. And honestly, with these, you could probably get away with not doing them and just let the wash do its thing. But since it's commission, I, I like to go to that little bit of extra, extra attention. It's, especially with this one being, um, or as I said, that's not what I was about to say. My brain just sort of escaped me from there for a moment. Um, I would normally like consider that to be more of a concern with, say, a squad leader go down to like super detail but you yeah, know since i'm being paid to do it nice to give it the, the extra little bit of zhuzh now actually what i'm gonna do i just thought about this right now normally i would go through and batch paint these 
but I'm going to do this in a slightly more sensible way because the next step is going to be taking the Apothecary White and uh, giving that an all over wash to shade some of the white armor. And that's going to take a bit to dry. So if I do that on him first and then move on to the next black bit and continue to run through that, by the time I'm done with the other clone trooper and Rex, the Apothecary White should be dry on our first one so I can then start, keep working on him. That's just a big aspect of, of batch painting in general is planning, like doing things in order. So by the time you get done with the last, with the current stage on the last mini, the first one has dried and is ready to, to go. There's an argument to be made, and it's a good argument, that instead of doing all of that that I just did by going through and slapping the apothecary uh, and, and painting the white or the off-white over all the armor, just priming in an off-white. And that's not an unreasonable argument to make. You could, in theory, prime in an off-white and then just go straight to slapping the apothe the um, the um, apothecary white on. The reason I don't do that, and the reason I don't recommend anyone do that, is no matter how com some companies might claim this to be the case, primers have different chemicals in them that make them stick to the um, the model, the bare plastic, the way that regular paints don't. That's the whole point of a primer. It, it's formulated differently, so it sticks to the model when it's bare. As a result, no matter how close you might think it would be from the primer to the, to the same color coming out of the pot, there's always going to be at least a slight difference. And so, especially when painting white like this next to black, it is inevitable. I don't care if you are the best painter in the world, it is inevitable you're going to slip. And so what's then going to happen is you're going to paint over the black part that you slipped on. And now you, you paint over with the white out of the pot and it looks slightly different to the primer and you can tell where that slip was. So I will always recommend at least giving a very quick base coat over rather than just leaving the, the primer as the color. Now, in some cases, if, you, if it's all like one color, sure, you can get away with that more easily. But if there is an option, if there is ch any chance you're going to have to go back and touch up that base color, yeah, give it a quick, give it a quick once over with the color out of the pot. Um, I'm not using one for these because... I don't want to um, put off people who are just starting out and don't have one, but an airbrush really helps with that. It speeds up a lot. Hey, Trip, welcome in, welcome in. If you have an airbrush, they're they're a lifesaver. And I'm I'm actually starting to pivot to using airbrushes for priming. And I actually really wish I'd done it with these, because if I'd have done that, I wouldn't have had that powder on this, because I didn't shake the primer properly. Although I have realized, in that kind of very Bob Ross, happy little accidents, I've realized I can make this work in my favor. Because there is that little bit of, of powdery, like nasty texturing. However, I just remembered that the commission request was to have them be on a snow base. So I can just make that look like frost on the armor. Aha! Solutions! Creative solutions. It's one of my things I always stress with, with mini painting is mistakes are going to happen. They always happen. That's why I like doing um, 
things like this as opposed to, you know, fancy, very cleaned up, very well edited YouTube videos. A, I don't have the talent all the time to make fancy, well edited YouTube videos. I have the time to make very shoddily edited YouTube videos. Um, but also, I think those can sometimes almost be off-putting to people. Um, they can be very helpful. I've learned a lot from, from them myself. But I think there's a space for the full... And it's it's part of the algorithm. YouTube doesn't do as... Like, you know, long-form videos don't simply don't do as well on YouTube. That's, that's just how the algorithm works. But I think there's a space for them. Because if you watch somebody go through and see them make mistakes, I think it makes you feel better about the mistakes you'll inevitably make yourself. And yes, happy disability pride, indeed. But they're good, and you should watch them. I, yes, I, I mean, yeah, the, the Final Fantasy ones are, are starting to go up. And of course, you know, that is where all of the showcase of all influencer wrestling is. And speaking, by the way, just because I'm going to continue banging on about this even more so than I already did, of things that you should be watching. Or in this case, things you should be listening to. A thing that I will be listening to this weekend to catch up and refresh my, my memory in advance of us returning to recording on Monday. I'm so excited. Uh, Quartz of Crystal, still out there. All 10 episodes of the first season, which are about an hour long in nice, easily, easily digestible chunks for you. Um, you should go get that listen if you haven't already. And see, it all ties together because Brock is also in All Influence Wrestling. He doesn't tend to have the best of times in All Influence Wrestling, does Paul Brock. He, as, as is usual, has been manipulated by, by bad people. Um, but, you know, that's how he do. But yeah, we return to we return to the table, virtual table, on on Monday. I so desperately need this. I so desperately need that game back. I have been ever since we locked that time in. I cannot stress how much I have been looking forward to this. Like literally counting the days. And that level of enthusiasm and joy that I have for it really carries through in the recording, I think. Of everything I've done, that is the thing of which I am the most proud. And uh, I really, really, really love it. And I want people to listen to it. So we, or I'm very ready to get back. Or I'm very ready to get back to being my badger man. We do miss being Brock. Of course, you know, where where that first season left off, uh, things left off in quite the interesting predicament. So I we, we, oh, have absolutely no idea where things are going to go from here in, when we start in that second season. Uh, things are, are weird. And considering how weird things got during that first season, when we say we left off in a weird place, you know I very much mean that. That's not it's it, 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 it's scary we have no idea where things are gonna go so it'll be weird but I'm looking forward to seeing what it is um and I'll see above above anything else I'm just looking forward to being back at the game table with my friends I miss it but I have digressed we are just getting close to done with the armor parts on our second clone trooper. Let's go and get his little shoulders. Or his elbows. Sorry, these aren't his shoulders. These are his elbows. Good lord. You know, I've never claimed to know anatomy. Mm 
know, it's kind of like how they, they tell people, you know, oh, well, it's a good thing you're pretty. But I'm just screwed in all, all, all aspects, so, oh well. <laughs> and that's me. I barely know me. Wait. <laughs> yep. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Keep that there. All right, let's get the visor back in just a wee bit. Because once again, I managed to slip. I'm not as worried about the. Is there going to be blue going over that? But we'll probably still fix it. The little helmet vents in the back. And I think after this, I may need to switch out to a different brush because this one is definitely at the end of its life. I may give it a, a bath in in but in brush soap to see if I can salvage it a bit, but I think this may be maybe it for this particular brush. Go back, and this is where where the project like this is where the wet palette really comes into handy, because I've got that mix of the armor from earlier that uh, stays wet, so I can easily just go back to it. Don't let it hit. Say that, or you might bristle with indignation. A, you really have been saving the puns up, Sahana. So proud of you. So I think that's good enough for the black bits. Meet that just a wee bit there. Oh, and on the, the his crotch guard. Okay. That's better. Just under the grundle. Alright. Him, which means we can go back to the apothecary white. Yeah, that's one nice thing that has been where a lot of my thoughts have been going live late because it's been a very rough it's been a very very rough week for me for reasons i'm not going to go into talked about it in the discord um but i came to realize you know just from from the the, the occasional people who have just reached out and checked in and just kind of being being back here with this tonight i'm very lucky i have i've i've over the the last few years made very 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 good choices in who I invite into my life and the friends I have come to make I'm in a much better spot with that these days it's nice to think about I'm a very lucky pirate in that respect So I just appreciate you all being here. Alright. And simultaneously, you know, so I'm thankful for the, the people who have checked in and also the, the people who have done so and, and respect the fact that I tend to work through things uh, by myself. 
I'm not a very venti type of person, despite what you may think from some of these streams where I have absolutely gone off on one. Um, but that's more just, you know, general injustice in the world tends to be what triggers those. When it's me dealing with personal stuff, I tend to, like, just shut down, hide and process, which is what works well for me. Um, but this is, so, you know, I see. It's just nice. Positive thinking and all of that. So that's good. That's all of his. So that's another one down. It's, and the downside with um, contrast paints on a lot of flat armor like this is it, it is going to dry pretty streaky. Like we can see that happening on this one from earlier. Those leg panels are very streaky, but that's okay because I'm just popping it back down into the the little vents and se separate bits, and then we're just going to go back over and brighten it back up. I could, if I really wanted to, be a lot more careful with it, like run it into each individual crease, but for the clone troopers, I don't think it's necessary. They aren't so massively... Um, they don't have such massive, huge panels that it's a, a pain to go back over it. So. Let me switch to a slightly different brush and see if this works better. There's a Corvus Black. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm using a mix of, of Citadel and Monument Hobbies and Reaper for this, but, you know, there are plenty of paint charts out there for people who want to use different paints. Whatever your collection is. I've built up my collection largely based on just what's available to purchase in my neighborhood or in my immediate area, so when I need a paint, I can just nip out and grab it. There's plenty of other... plenty of others. Never listen to anyone who tells you you have to use a particular brand of paint. It's nonsense. It might be their favorite, but something else could be somebody else's. There are some that are better and worse than others at certain things, but, you know, experiment, play around, find out what works for you. Get just a little bit under the knees for Rex. It's because of the way his legs are positioned. You can see a little bit of the under suit through there. A little bit under. Yep. <laughs> um... I don't know if it's actually on there. I, I started putting them up. I think I may have I think I may have only done the one for the droids and for Ventress so far. But it will go up there. There is a blog section that will have it up there. Um otherwise you can find it on uh on my Twitter. And I will be making a priority to get the clones recipe card up as well. If you check my uh my tweet from earlier in the week promoting this, I put the recipe card on that. Um, there's also a separate card for the paints. Down a bit more. But yeah, I uh, unfortunately have been a little too busy to get the rest of the cards up on the blog. Um, and I need to finish creating the ones for Anakin and Obi-Wan. Once Twitter works again, yeah, that's that's the thing, isn't it? Um, which I suppose is a good time to point out that... Uh, hi, I'm on Blue Sky as well. So if you have access to that, the Blue Sky link is in the socials as well. Which I haven't been using extensively as of yet. That's largely because I haven't been around social media at all this week for the most part. But I am there painting pirate at Blue Sky. There aren't a huge there's not a huge amount of content there from me yet, but there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of content from anyone over there yet. Yep. Once again. Okay. 
little elbow. Joint. Oh. Stretch out a minute. Oh. Important to get the stretches in because, especially, especially after I've been painting for a while, I know I have a tendency to hunch over a lot. I start to feel the the pressure in the old shoulders. So it's always good to do that occasional stretch out. Like, oh yeah, muscles. Those are a thing that sees up after a while. Okay. We're also going to get the handle of Rex's pistols. I'm not going to do those in metallic. Just a wee bit more paint on the palette. There we go. Unshrimps, exactly. Everyone unshrimp. Everyone stretch. Lord knows I forget to. Frequently. Now, what I'm going to have to look up later is, is the patterning on Rex's helmet. Because when I did my Rex, I did him helmet off. And he has a little more of an intricate pattern design than the others do. So I'm going to have to look that up later. So I may not finish Rex on stream today because I want to look that up, but I'm making pretty decent progress on these. Yeah, that's the that's the, the really nice part about the clone troopers is yeah they they have such a very they have a simple color pal palette but it's very striking and very effective. So you don't need a huge amount of paint to get a really nice looking effect on them. Again, they won't be done done because I'm going to do all the bases in a batch. So they're going to stay on the temporary basis for right now. Be good. What's really sad, and the way that this is just how how invested and, and overcommitted I get to everything. I have been very very tempted because I've been eyeing my my display board. If you check the Twitter, you'll notice I finished some of my own shadow points. I, I've been trying to get better about posing fancy mini photos. Um, I really want to go and buy because the the one bit of terrain that's out that I don't have is the high ground set. I'm really tempted to go and buy it. I just painted up to add even more terrain onto my little display board. Because I really like it. I want more. Speaking, by the way, of um, amazing display boards. When I was chatting um, with my friend and DM of Quartz of Crystal, and Anna's recently done an amazing display of like a crashed like Star Wars like space truck type thing. Like LEDs, like graffitied all over. It's amazing. Like when she showed me, I was like, holy shit, this is so cool. Hey Lady Luck, welcome in, welcome in. I'm trying to swear less because it's a sponsored stream, but but, but seriously, holy shit, it's cool. See if I can find where she posted and pop it in the Discord because it's, it's dope. Um, yeah, hello, Lady Luck. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Oops, slipped again. Let's get Rex's visor all in there. It's the same for him around the little. I think that's one thing I, I recommend about this set. Uh, even if you don't want to play the game, 
the models, the sculpts are so fantastically cinematic. They make wonderful display pieces. Like, have I played the game? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, I don't have anyone to play it with. Um, but I don't care because the display board is coming together incredibly nicely. So, it's great. I'd like to like learn to play the game eventually, but you know, I'm a collector, I'm a painter, I'm not a hardcore wargamer. So, this is the side of the hobby that I'm more interested in anyway. And it's really appealing for that reason. Neaten up some of the armor where I screwed up and went a little off with it. You fall into the black hole of magic card reorganization? I am so sorry. Yeah, that's been me uh, uh, when I've been, uh, a lot of my week has been spent just kind of spacing out. And um, I found that organizing cards is great for that. Alright, so that I think is good for most. What I now need to do as well is we're going to go to a slightly larger brush. Let's double check my Rex. Alright, so let's double check for his little pauldron thing what the undercolor is. It's also one, so we'll leave that alone. But he's got his little side sash thing. That needs to be black. Let's go for a moment. Yep. Uh, reach over and grab my water. Stephen, hello, hello. Holy shit. 33 months. Thank you, Stephen. That that's my thought as well, Lady Luck. Is the dish that's why I've been doing it, is the digital record. Um, because my intention is I'm going to go through, put them all in there. I'm also organizing them by set into binders. So then I can put a label on each of them as to which set they are. And then I can pop into Architect and see, have a record of what's in each binder. So, which is, is and then I can go through and, and filter things by what is a pirate. And build pirate decks. How was, uh, how was Power Wash Sim, Stephen? I, I, again, I... I have been a te I've been such a terrible friend this week. I've been lurking in people's streams, but I haven't been super active and super chatty. Um, and by super, I mean I haven't said anything. I simply haven't had the, the mental bandwidth to be social this week. I've been a bad friend. Um, but I was enjoy I was lurking for your uh, your SpongeBob power washing co-op and with Sue. And uh, from what I could tell, getting a crash course in Spongebob lore. The, uh, the deep, the deep lore of Spongebob Squarepants. Which I say that jokingly, but apparently that is an actual thing. Um, cause I also am massively unfamiliar with the program. I am, uh, I am of an age and I think to a certain extent of a nationality where I simply did not overlap with that. Either I was too old or, or is it too old? Not the target demographic. I'm sorry. I should say, um, because. There is no such thing as being too old for anything. I say this is somebody who absolutely is not the, the, tar the target demographic, but will sing the praises of Owl House until my head falls off. Um, I simply was not the target demographic at the time. So I did not... was not a part of my experience. Okay, 
Such a good show. It just has more seasons in the movie. Yes. Yes, it does. It really does. I was so upset um, when it ended. The Owl House, that is. And in fact, one of my favorite things that I own is my gym bag. Because I have a very special gym bag. Because my gym bag is hooty. Who is the absolute best character in that show? I will die on this hill. Disney did do Dana Dirty, yes. Yep. I mean, at, I, I suppose at least she was able to finish out the show and give it an ending. There's far too many shows don't get to do that. So at least, at least we got an ending. I'll take that over the alternative. Unless he has a blowfish, I have no idea what this show is. No blowfish. Um, yeah, Owl House, it's a D Disney Channel show, um, but is it's one of those shows that it is on the surface level, it's a kid's show, but there's so much to enjoy about it. Um, it's just fantastic. I, I say I rec it's recommended viewing for literally everybody, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, genuinely cannot recommend it enough. I still have never seen Steven Universe. Another thing that I was not the target demographic for, and I know a lot of people who aren't were super into it. I've just not had the time to sit down and go through it. Same as how, and I know this one greatly upsets many people, I still have yet to manage to get through Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> nice, Ren. Nice. But no. That's in my head now, though. Well done. Sets with a little side cloths. Just about done. I've definitely like slapped all over the place with this. Like some of it's undersides, so it doesn't stand out too much. But I'm only reliable for catching parts of Sun Show as I finish almost nothing. That's me. That's me. That's me. As well. Yeah. Oh yeah, fandom discourses are awful. I think the I think in general the best way to enjoy just about anything is to not engage with the fandom attached to the thing at all, he says, painting a Star Wars miniature. Um Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> There's only one season of me universe, says Stephen. Nice. Yes. I mean, it seems like it's something I would be into, but you know, time. Time, as always, is the problem for me. music just seems to have sort of stopped. Very, very sloppy. This. So I'm going to need to clean it. We're going to tidy up Rex a bit. And then we can give him his apothecary wipe. And then all will be at the same stage. Have you seen Centaur World? I have not seen that. You know what it is. It's uh, it got to the end of the oh, interesting. It got to the end of the page in the audio library and didn't continue on to the next one, which I just assumed it was going to do. Didn't. Let's just do a little bit of clean up around the edges.
it's honestly not that bad. I haven't done, I haven't splashed over too terribly much, but given that it's black over white, it looks a lot. Shouldn't take me too long to get this neatened up. The worst part's on the underside, which, if, again, if this were just for me, I probably wouldn't care, because it's on the underside, nobody's going to see it, nobody's going to know. But since it's for a commission... I want to get that little extra bit of work into it, just to make it the best I can do, you know? You know, best foot forward and all that. Alright, I think that looks much better. Let's quickly scan around. Let's get this little... Uh... Oh, actually, I didn't... I never did the... Um... The holster at all, did I? Because it was part of the the sash. So let's just quickly pop a wee bit of the prime coat on that. Go. There we go. That looks pretty decent. So now back to the apothecary white. And then once we're done with this, I'm going to take a quick stretch break and then um, we're going to jump back in and brighten these back up. Let's just lap the Arthur Curry White all over our boy Rex. Not worry too much if I get this over the black parts because it won't really make a difference. If anything, it might give them a little bit of highlighting. That goes. Shoulders. Which, on that note, one thing I will not be doing with the stormtroopers, storm troopers, clone troopers, excuse me, is um, highlighting the, the black, with the exception of on Rex and his sash. Um, simply because it's, I don't, I don't feel like it's worth it. There's such little black on them. Uh, I could go in and do, like, usually I like to do, like, a uh, Incubi Darkness Thunderhawk Glue highlight for black cloth, which is what we'll be doing for Maul, probably. There's such a little black showing through, I don't think, I think it's wasted effort. If it was a display piece or for, uh, like, a contest, then maybe I'd do that, but it's not worth it for these. The white is the important part. All right. There we go. All right, so that's Rex slapped on. All right, so now, guys, I'm going to take that quick break. So I'll be back in just like one or two minutes. Um, so stretch, hydrate, take care of yourselves. And then when I'm back, we're going to go back to brightening up the armor on the clone troopers. And then look, they will actually be very, very close to done. So be right back.
figures are they? Yes, it is a very excellent time to go and check out that link. Um, it is always an excellent time to check out that link. <clears throat> Which I will be popping into the Discord and on tweets and stuff as well. Um, on which note... Sorry, I almost choked on a muffin. Ding? I... But yeah. <clears throat> the, uh... You know, we talk a lot about ways you can support streamers that don't have any monetary cost. That right there is one of them. <clears throat> um, clicking that link and going through and looking at the site genuinely does help me because it's, you know, tracked metrics. And that's how they know, like, that's how they know how I, how well I've done in this is by people going through and engaging. And so that genuinely helps. because that's a, that's what will make them want to do more work with me in future and also it helps like prove the the point that i've been banging on about for years and that uh not just me like other streamers have as well especially in our little small streamer space the pink pop got clogged a wee bit um <clears throat> is that stream numbers aren't everything. And that a smaller streamer with an actively engaged community will often generate, they may not generate as much traffic as a large streamer, but the traffic they generate will be more valuable. Because that, that is a concept, is, is just driving traffic isn't um, the be-all and end-all of it. There, there's quality of traffic as well. Which I know I, I brought this up before and continually threatens to send Lady Luck into a marketing spiel rant. <laughs> she really does get, she gets this too. Um, but so that's why always with these types of things, with those tracked and inset, tracked metrics, helps prove with numbers the things that we, the thing that we all know to be true. So, yeah, it's free. It helps. And it genuinely, genuinely helps. Just mixing up another batch of the bass tone. I'm, I just want it to be pretty much the same as what I did for this first. We'll put it down just a little more this time, though, because it's now a second layer, so I don't have to worry as much about coverage. All we really want to do with this is brighten back up after putting the apothecary white on. So just another layer, only this time I'm avoiding where the seams are. Just very quick. Doesn't need to be super... Doesn't need to be super, super precise. The main thing is just to get those big flat panel areas and to not run it into the new shadow that we have thanks to the Apothecary White. And if I do, it's okay because I can always just run a little more Apothecary White back in to fix anything I do. But again, with with a trooper like this who doesn't have a great deal of super intricate detailing on it it's it's pretty simple to do pretty straightforward so if you need to just run a little bit more apothecary white in it's not a big deal not a big deal at all The shoes are one of the parts where we have the most. Those little parts picked out. We've got that nice little ridge along the top. And the outsides there. So I was trying to avoid those. Such a good trooper. They are, they are, well, I mean, it depends. 
Has uh has all the 66 happened yet? Because at that point, you know, they're still good good troopers, just you know. That's not necessarily a good thing. Because as we all know, good soldiers obey orders. <clears throat> the Lilo and Stitch all there, yep. I think in my mind, that was one of the most impressive things about Clone Wars. And again, I'm not going to get into spoilers for it. Because I know blah blah blah, it's an older show, but I only just watched it. And there might be people out there who are also only just watching it, so I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, but, you know. I don't think at this point, it's it's cons you can't really consider it a spoiler to say what happens with Anakin. We all know who Anakin turns into. I thought it was fantastic that they managed to keep like a very interesting and at times very suspenseful show going when we all know what the end result's going to be. But I wound up getting surprisingly invested. They did a very good job with it. They did a very good job with the character creation. I think of the Clone Wars clone episodes. Yep. Yeah, they did a great job with that show. I think it was fantastic. I'm uh, I'm sad it took took me so long to get around to watching it, but I I loved it when I finally did. So you know. The belt's one of the parts where I want to be a little careful because it's got the like the little sep like I don't know what the name is. What I'm looking for the little ridges where the belt segments connect. I leave those. A little more distinct. starting to come together love to see the bad batch yeah we were talking about that earlier but um blackjack i think they would be an amazing fit for it that would be the only time i would paint her yeah i think the bad batch would be an idea i would be i will be shocked if they don't at some point do that um obviously i don't know what's coming i don't have any like fancy insider info or, or anything like that um but i mean come on they would they would be perfect Uh, one thing, uh, one of the packs that's coming out that I'm really excited for as well is, um, I forget, oh god, I forget what the, the name of the pack is again, but it's got, um, it's like one of the, it's like the, the Dathomir pack with like Ventress's mother. And the so bad it's good named Savage Opress. Which is objectively a silly name. But it's so silly it kind of wraps back around and is like at least amusing. But like the the minis in that one look amazing. It's like you can't just pronounce it Savage. Come on. 
I mean, not like any, I mean, you know, silly names in Star Wars. Come on, it's, 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 it's tradition. The Night Sisters. Thank you. That's the name I was, I was blanking on. The Night Sisters. Yes. Um, yeah, there's a pack of them coming out and they look real cool. They look real cool. If you go through that link, you can probably find the pre-order stuff through there, through some embedded links. Um, one thing I realized watching a Bad Batch made me real happy. Witches of Dathomir. Thank you, Matt. Yes, Witches of Dathomir. There you go. Um, is in one of those amusing crossovers of fandom there's um the two the two recurring characters who have name i'm sure they have names i don't know that they ever get officially named outside of the credits um but the two who always hang out at um at the bar they're just two aliens hanging out at the bar they're there in a bunch of episodes um are voiced by Liam O'Brien and Sam Regal. It's the two bar buddies who hang out all the time. It's Liam and Sam. I mean, that made me laugh. It's these little throwaway bit parts. But they get to just hang out and be friends in Star Wars. That made me happy. Yeah, Rose and Prince and Guildenstern, yeah, or um, yeah, Statler and Waldorf. I'm getting a little more careful as I get around the faceplate because that, even without, um, you know, a face that's visible. That, um, like, very angled look for the, the visor, like, that's significant. That's a focal point. So, then, again, just pick the, pick out the upraised bits. Just a, you know, it's a, it's a standard nameless trooper, so they don't get a huge amount of, you know, Extra attention, extra focus, but you know, enough to just make him look good on the tabletop. And that's like tabletop standard is why I'm doing this commission too. So. Which is what I wanted to do for the uh for these sponsored segments too. Because I, I I am not the best painter in the world. I freely admit this. Um I mean that's there's there's some phenomenal talent out there. So my approach, as you all know, if you've been here for a while is I, I'm more focused on trying to make painting accessible, sort of demystify the process. That's just what I'm trying to do here. Am I perfect? No, absolutely not. But I can get things that look pretty good on a tabletop, and I think that's what most people want. So and there we go. So now we can actually do a nice little before or after. So you can see how it's just been nicely brightened back up. And we've still got Especially, like, it really, really pops around those knees and the chest plate. The effect that that um, administratum grey contrast really had. I said, I'm, or administratum grey, sorry, apothecary white. Administratum grey is the mix for the, the white armor. Um, and I've not tried the, uh, I've not tried, like, army paint of speed paints or Viejo's, um, whatever the hell they're called. I'm sure they have a white that would work exactly the same way. I use a lot of Citadel Contrast because it's what I have available in my neighborhood, like I said earlier, but I'm sure others will work fine too. Mm 
knee pants. Protect the knees. Protect the knees. There we go. Poor trooper number three. Didn't even get to make it out the dropship. Yep. Yep. Alright, so these troopers are going to be on the snow world with orange face markings. Very late in the series. I will say that part of this, that little aspect of the series is something that did make me kind of go, excuse me, what? So, um, you know, with the, the orange face markings being a legion of troopers demonstrating their loyalty to Ahsoka, which on the surface level is like, oh, that's sweet. But it's like, you, you put her face markings on your... That doesn't feel right. That feels weird. That th this doesn't feel good. <laughs> Which, if I remember right, that's kind of Ahsoka's reaction to it. She's like, y y "Okay, you did. Y you thought this was a good idea." Like, uh -huh. it's like simultaneously kind of flattered, kind of creeped out. It's like, okay, this feels weird. Nice and quick over the leg plate. And, uh, yep. Not super worried about the feet because Again, with these ones wanting to be on snow bases, I'm going to be applying some element of like dry brushing and trying to make them look like they've been walking through snow. So the feet later on aren't going to be... they're going to be a little covered. So that will be something I don't have to worry overly much about. There's a set called You Can't Escape that would make a great display. Oh, is that uh is that the um is that the Vader Obi-Wan one? Cause I will absolutely be pre-ordering that. Yeah. I love that. They did the same uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol has done the same thing. They've got a couple of really cool dual sets. There's one from MCP that I really want to get at some point, which is the uh Sabretooth Wolverine one in front of like a snow-covered Weapon X facility. I really want to get that. I fell off it to, to paint the Shadowpoint stuff, but I do want to get back to painting my Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff. Because I've had a great deal of fun with that. And I've still got a bunch of the, that core set left to work on. Because those sculpts keep getting way and way more wild and interesting. They they just um, I think either, either revealed or is about I don't think he's out yet. It or if he is, he's just come out. Uh, claw. And the the model looks wild. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm also not super familiar with the character of Claw, so I don't know like what the, the thing is, but it's like he's like 
diving out of like himself. I guess a projection of himself. I don't. I, I don't know anything about the character of Paul. So. Mm. Looks very, very cool. And they recently did. Um, Squirrel Girl, which makes me happy. MCP ones keep looking better and better and better. So I'm very excited to see, because they've started from a phenomenal baseline with Shadowpoint. So, ooh, packages! Yay, package! So there's so much you can do so many places that are going to be able to do there's so much lore to pull from with these and of course with um the way star wars is continuing to go there's only going to be more that gets added so like what i'm looking forward to painting as part of this commission because it's a mini that i don't have um, which I think it may have been a pre-order bonus or something, was Padawan Ahsoka. So I'm looking forward to painting that, and I'm wondering, okay, well, we've got Padawan Ahsoka, we've got Ahsoka Tano Jedi No More from the, the core set. Will there eventually be, you know, adult Rosario Dawson Ahsoka? Who knows? Seems feasible to me. What about, oh, you know, potentially Book of Boba Fett, Old Man Boba, who you could have his sub-command to be Fennec Shand, whose name I finally remember. I finally, finally remember Fennec's name because I start, I associated it with Fennec Fox. And so now I just think, okay, Fennec, Fennec Fox, Fennec Shand, there we go, got it. As opposed to how I was previously referring to her as that one character, Ming Na Wen plays. It was really cool, but just let it up and go, that's my novel. Again, rank four. Oh, and also, uh, it's not I, nothing to do with my link, but if you're into just kind of the general like crafting and, and brain building and all that kind of cool stuff, uh, I saw a post recently that Atomic Mass Games did about this amazing, amazing Star Wars Legion, like battlefield they had built um, of Naboo. It blew my mind. It's so cool looking. I go check that. I say go check that Twitter. Apparently, Twitter's broken. I check the Atomic Mass Game Slap. Sure, there's a link to a blog or something on there. It looked so cool. From what I saw on the post, like the person who made it for them, it took like nine months to do. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there you go. That <laughs> saw it. Um, it's so cool. I am so envious of that thing. Like, I wish I had the space to build shit like that, because that looks so cool. Go, another trooper dune. So let's get back to Rex. Do him. Yeah, that thing is amazing. I think what really makes that stand out to me is you so rarely see um, light-coloured 
battlefields. And so seeing a battlefield that resembles Naboo really was unique because yeah, you see battlefields, it's it usually a lot of like very it's it's browns and greys, like that's usually the kind of you know, you get a lot of ruins, like that's the, the typical thing you expect on a a wargaming battlefield. So to see something so legitimately beautiful was incredible. Jim Martin's the most amazing artist. We were lucky to work with him. We're also in the middle of starting up some staff hobby challenges. Hopefully we'll be able to share more hobby content on with announcements from within the studio. That's real cool. That's real cool. Isn't it, Banana Mobster? Isn't it? Like, I saw that thing. I'm like, holy, wow. That is incre genuinely amazing. And like I said, I love that it's so different from what you usually see like it really stands out so good Just a wee bit around there. Okay. That's good. Gets away from the dark and dingy environments. Exactly. Because I think I think that's something that tends to get a little bit stuck when it comes to tabletop wargaming, right? You think um you, you tend to think tabletop wargaming and, and your your mind usually tends to go towards either grim dark or like the other the other thing that's very fr frequent is like historics like napoleonic war world war ii type stuff which is still like lots of you know muddy fields the grays the dark the browns the mud the the ruined terrain so yeah the concept of like oh no this is gorgeous this is pretty very very visually distinct yeah and it makes sense because you think uh, and i get why why people tend to do it that way because you think war you think you know it's messy it's dirty it's it's unpleasant it's not a thing of beauty and so but war happens in areas that are beautiful that's part of the tragedy of it right is is it invades and it gets destroyed and that's you know one of the things that was stark about the scenes that happen on the boot is the droid army invading this beautiful serene location so it was really cool to see that represented and i love I, I just love anything like that that kind of breaks away from the norm like I've I've talked about on stream before how I was so happy to see at uh, Adepticon the, the the finalist in their Star Wars Legion tournament who had the the pink um, themed army. It's like that's cool, that's real cool, that's distinct. I love it. Make your stuff stand out. They're your minis. You can paint them how you want. The seeing people break away from the norm and, and do that is, is fabulous. That's also my favorite thing about tournaments. It's like, yeah, it's, it's nice to see that, like the super fantastic, well-painted, you know, hyper lore accurate armies, but I like the meme armies. 
I like seeing the people, I like seeing people with their pink Star Wars troops. I like people's, you know, Hello Kitty Marines. I, you know, I like the, the weird esoteric stuff that the, the Marvel thing was. Yeah, like the Marvel ones have been amazing. Um, I know that they're, that's one of the things they announced at Adepticon, right, is the, uh, they're going to be making Wakanda themed terrain for MCP. And that is going to be amazing. I'm, I'm very eagerly awaiting that. Like, I want to paint that up. And you know what? I just realized as I was going through and painting this, I've done the same thing to this Rex that I did to, to mine that I painted. Which is there's this little extra part of his cloth that I missed. I missed that exact same one when I was painting mine. Did it again. It's like, okay, nope, there's the gun. It's like, oh, yep, yeah, nope, there's cloth there. I missed that. That's okay. Let's paint that in. It's inevitable. You're going to miss miss parts. Go back. Happens more often than not to literal pro paint, like the actual paid professionals uh, painters than you would think. They get done with the thing and go take the photo and realize the part that they thought they would get back to later and then forgot that they hadn't done it. And then they finish the mini and then realize when they sit down to take the picture. Grah! I've done that. Packages are quite excellent. Hopefully they're fun packages. I've heard tale of like, not just like, even, you know, people who do this for like commercial work or anything, but like the people who paint stuff for the box art will do that. And it's like, you know, a lot of times some of the, the stuff that's on the box art was photoshopped because they got it up there for the shoot, realized they'd forgotten to paint a bit. It's like, just photoshop it in. The mini painting version of having a doc named Final Final 100% Final. Sahana, have you been looking at my, uh, my Adobe Premiere files? <laughs> file. The amount of times I have I've been upload, I've gone to upload. I've, it, the Final Fantasy 16 ones have been the worst offender because I have to put the end scene on. Realized that I uploaded it, forgot to put the end scene on, so I have to go back, add that in, and re-export it. But what I do in that situation is. Um, I just, I cheat, I just, I just delete the, the last one and just say, oh, just, no, you can't see my shame if I just reuse the same file name. It's fine, you can't tell how many times I exported the same thing because I forgot part of the process. Nope, you can't tell. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Nobody can see my shame. I mean, I do it all the time with minis. The number of times I've repainted a part of a mini just because I either forgot to do it or forgot a step. And then realized, like, oh crap, I forgot to I forgot to do the wash or I forgot to Or the absolute worst part is where I've built something into sub-assemblies, paint everything, and then realize in the chaotic mess that is my desk, I set part of the sub-assembly off to the side and forgot to paint it. So it's like, oh, you thought you were done? Nah, son. You ain't done yet, mate. Handshakes and chat, yep. We all know. We all know. Oh, 
What I do like about Rex's helmet is it's got the markings carved into it. So that'll be nice and easy to follow. Like you can see kind of up there on the, the helmet, he's got those grooves for where the thing... Yeah, that, that, it started at a very unfortunate time because it starts literally as I went live on stream. So once I wrap stream, I'm going to be going back and watching it. I hope it's been good interesting. I know who I want to win things, but I think I'm going to be disappointed. side of those helmet markings because again I'm gonna have to look up what Rex's helmet design looks like. I also want to see if when the when the orange markings go onto the, the helmets does Rex's change. I don't remember if he gets one or if he sticks with the blue so I'm gonna to have to check that. But there we go. Rex's uh white bits are done. Oh I drift a little bit off camera. They're trying to hype they're hyping up a WrestleMania coming to London. That would be amazing. I might actually come and visit if that's the case. All right, pop that off to the side. So all the white bits are mostly done. So next up, next stage of the process is my Pro Kirill Dark Silver, my absolute favorite. favorite. I say white bits, like that's not 90% of the minis. This is one of my all-time favorite metallic paints. It's so, so smooth. I, I love, love this paint. I'm just going to sit here and do the shaky bit, because you got to shake the metallics nice and good to make sure that you don't just get the medium. This is just going to be for the guy. Just going to be for the gun. And part of me, like last time I painted this, I, I do kind of wonder. I think I, I figured the same thing out with the uh, with the, the droids too. I'm a little questioning how worth it this stage is given that the next stage is to go over it with a black contrast now, i'm not sure how much the metal really shines through part of me wonders does it make more sense to just do the black contrast to start with and then do the highlights in silver but since i wanted this to part to to follow the guide i put out i'm sticking with it for now but Part of me feels like you could get away without this step and just do the, the Black Legion and then the, the filigree silver highlights. Yeah, shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your paint pot. Shake your paint pot. Do -do -do -do. Let's try to get all the fiddly little angles. Yeah, it doesn't need to be too... I'm not overtly worried about getting a, uh, getting all coverage with this, because anything I miss, the Black Legion is going to cover anyway. So For these, I am going to go over all at once, just because... Metallics, I, I find in my experience, do dry a little faster, even on the wet palette. Or they just start to separate again. So let's water it down ever so slightly. I realize now, literally just realized, what I should have done is do the local recording of this so I have it right there and ready to go to YouTube. But I didn't do that because I'm not smart. And so that's fine. I'll just pull down the Twitch file and upload that. It's like, damn it, I could have split out the audio. Because I was just sitting here 
with my brain going brrr, the way ADHD brain tends to go, thinking, oh, you know what would be nice for the YouTube VOD is I can upload the chapters. I, I can put it, I can, I can mark the chapters that mark where the various stages of the, the painting guide are. And then I realized, oh wait, I'm not recording, am I? Which mod it is. Just bung it, bung it up on YouTube. Just download that and bung it up there. Same thing for Rex, who gets just his wee little pistols. His nice little pistols. I was just thinking, the nice, you know, I guess it'll be easier for me to avoid money in the bank spoilers until I can catch up with it if Twitter's down. I wonder about that, you know, if Twitter's down right now, or at least, you know, failing and, and not really possible to use, I wonder how much better people's moods are in general. And that's not just me being like shitty and toxic and be like, oh, you'd be better off if you just avoid social media. We can't. It's, it's life now. I do feel better when I'm not engaging with it, especially for creatives and, and people like us. Like, you know, we ha we need it to market. It's it's a unfortunate necessity. Is the chapters thing something you could start with next time? Oh no, I can do it regardless. No, the, the the me not recording doesn't impact putting the chapters up because that's just sticking timestamps into YouTube. Like that's easy. It doesn't in any way um, prohibit that. I was just. That was just me sort of explaining how my ADHD brain landed on that thought. Um, actually, read the book for two hours earlier instead of disassociating on Twitter. It's stressful to wonder about like market stuff and streaming rating for either. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, well, and that's the reason it's so difficult to move off the platform. Is it's the pretty much the go-to the splash there. So honestly, he looks mostly done. If he were a stormtrooper. But he's not a stormtrooper, he's a clone trooper. So what I'm gonna do next is I, I just do a little it's not this doesn't make a huge difference. But I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a little bit of edge highlighting. So I've got now the white scar, and this is just gonna be for some of the more prominent edges on the white arm. And I want to do this first because if I do this highlight, then put the, or sorry, if I did this after doing the markings, it would, it'll look weird. So a little edging, just as a treat. Indeed. All right. So let me go back to one of my nice thin brushes. White scar. Probably needed a bit more shaking, but I'm getting self-conscious about that, so we're gonna down. Yep. And just we're gonna just lightly run it along the edges. Some of these more pronounced bits. The knees. And this is one of the reasons as to why it was so important I did that um off-white for the armor is it lets me do this bit and have it actually make a, a bit of a difference. It's a nice little split edge on the thigh piece. With the ISO set where it is, I don't know how much of this is picking up really on camera. I think you can kind of see like that, that ridge on the thigh piece now is a bit more pronounced. I don't want to do this around all of it. I could. I could if I really wanted to. And again, if this was maybe a display piece, I might go around to do a lot more of this. But with it being a basic troop and being painted to tabletop standard, I want to just do the most pronounced bits. Just 
the parts that would catch the light the most. I'm also struggling with it a little bit because my but the white paints are a nightmare for the most part and citadels are really guilty of this where they they start to really get clumpy and congealy and my pot of white scar has absolutely started to do that so it's a little little frustrating to work with right now so you know minimizing my frustration is an aspect of this as well it's mainly just trying to get a little bit of variation between some of these more distinct white panels. We just want to go around the chest plate. So I want that to stand out just a little bit more. Run it down the range. I'm not going to bother with the shoulders because uh, the shoulders are going to get completely covered in, in blue. Haven't seen many panels that white since the Summer Games Fest. <laughs> Hey. Oh, we laugh so we don't. Ah. Yeah, that one gets a bit dumb dish. It's just very. Just dots in on the little arm panel bit. His little his, his buttons on his arm. I don't know what the buttons do. I don't know what the buttons are for. I presume one of them is just to like order tacos. Turn again. Not going to be super stressed about the front bit because that's going to get some blue down it wish i had a taco button yeah right that'd be nice it's the back it's a nice back panel And, you know, again, same. We've got all these little, like, ports and holes in the back panel. What do they put in those? What, what do the clone troopers put in the little entry ports on the back of their suit? Because if they were cyborgs, it would make sense. That would be, okay, that's where you, you plug in for, like, your data downloads and all. But they're flesh and blood. So what gets put in those? They have got the little, like, the little tiny hole ones. Do they keep that little baby carrots in there for their lunch? I have no doubt that I could go onto like Wikipedia or something, and there is an incredibly detailed explanation there on exactly what every single one of those ports is for. But I prefer to think of them as being for baby carrots. All right. I must say that's good enough for him. Like we do, again, it wasn't a huge difference, but it's that subtle little extra bit of detailing that just push, just punches it up a level. Again, I don't know how much of a difference you can really tell between the two of them, especially with, you know, white and the reflection. From that angle, you can kind of see a bit of a difference, but you know what? I'm happy for the clone troopers. They deserve a crisp baby carrot. They do indeed. <laughs> I take it, Sahana, you are not a fan of carrots. Oh, 
Wild cards. I tend not to store them in random holes in my outfit. Okay, Neil, that's fair. That's fair. Well, but that's the point, though. It's it. I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's not a random hole. It's the designated carrot storage hole. It's it's not a random hole if its purpose is carrot storage. <laughs> You're correct. Wikipedia seems to have a fair list of things on the back. I'm in no way surprised. Oh, I'm in no way surprised. Lungs of feet. Uh, down there. Yeah, on the, the groin panel. Make that nice and shiny. Yeah. Around the feet. There we are. I think I drifted off camera there a little bit. Yeah, sadly one is not a jizz player, indeed. Mm -hmm. Like the hoodies with the headphone ports, yes. Mm -hmm. I guess that moment of going, yep, should I should I say that on, on stream, given that it's a thing? But it's like, no, that's the actual name of it. Yep, that, no, that, yep, mm-hmm. That's that's what it's called. That ain't my fault. I didn't call it that. I am for once actually innocent. I do wonder, though, I mean, I am going to make it worse. So, like, we have different forms of jazz, right? You've got, like, for example, slow, ja slow jazz. Does that also, you know, is that also a thing? Like, does, does, does the, and that, does the, 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 the similarities, that's the word I was looking for, similarities persist? It certainly would, Ren. It certainly would. Experimental, indeed. Just bopping around some of the edges on the helmet just to make sure we get a little bit. I, I might go back over and highlight some of these later after I do the markings because I just realized also I'm planning out where to put the highlights on the helmet based on the blue markings and I'm not doing the blue markings. I need to do the, the orange ones. So I think I'm actually going to stop that. I will come back and reconsider that after I finish that. I keep, let me zoom back out just a wee bit because I keep drifting off the top of the camera. All right, so let's pop Rex back on. And we'll get some of his highlights. Ugh, stretch out the arms, and there we go. Hey, Lily. <laughs> yeah catching up on store yeah conversations of, of 
Taco buttons and carrot storage holes. Yep, it's uh I'd say this is what happens when I haven't streamed in a few days, but this actually isn't really anything abnormal. This is just how it this is how it goes around here. It's it's just just embrace the weird. Just embrace the weird, it's fine. That's normal. Weird is normal. It's starting to come along. Categories of jazz on Spotify for a lot. Yeah, we just look up just categories of jazz and just mentally replace it. And, you know, there's your next hour. Now, why does Rex get that battle kilt? Can all troopers wear battle kilts or is it only for special units? I don't know. I, I don't know. Again, probably on Wikipedia somewhere. but Because I wonder about that because there's there's maybe, you know, the case to be made of, oh, it, no, it's, it's like a designation of rank. But Cody doesn't have one. It could just be, um, I mean, it, it could be just as simple as it's just Rex um, expressing his, like, it, that's a big thing with the clones, right? Is finding things that is an element of individuality for them. So maybe Rex just did it and nobody else wants to do it because they don't want to be copying him. They want that, they, they're happy to let that be his thing. And each of them has like their own separate thing of their own. They're like, ah, damn it, that looks cool, but now that's Rex's thing. Like all of them are going, damn, I wish I thought of that. It is a fun sort. I like to think it's a fun sort of weird. I mean, I presume other people think of it too. People keep coming back. Never, I never will understand why, but yeah, you know, I appreciate it. There, uh, his little backpack. Just a little extra. Extra bit there. Image of his fancy pauldron. It's just a little bit on the arms. And guards, and we're just going to paint in Rex's little buttons too little dots on them just to make them stand out that little bit more all right I think it's good for highlights on the boy what I do need to do I just remembered after you know that talk earlier about forgetting to paint things and going oh I'll get to that later realization dawned I did exactly that with that little bit of cloth on Rex that I missed so let's do that now before I forget it again because I will forget it again It's a Mandalorian thing. Which makes me very curious as to why Rex has one. I mean, I get, you know, obviously, like, they're clones of, of Django, so there's the Mandalorian thing there, but why only Rex? That makes the why is he the only one with one even more curious. All right. 
There we go. There, pop that in there. Good. Can we back to learn your secrets? And one day, with knowledge from Panda and Zero, I shall become the ultimate mini painter. Go for Captain Planet with it. Yes. Or mini painting Voltron. Yes. Alright. So now. Before I move on to those markings, I'm going to grab the Black Legion. Actually, no, sorry, Black Templar. Where'd it go? I set out the paints ahead of time and I still lost them. Found it. So we're going to slap this over the guns just to get them that, that darkness, which will hopefully have some, some element of the metallic still shining through. So the question may be how, how much it works on, on the small scale of the guns. I know this works to give the metallic effect because it's what I've done with the Death Guard Mandos. Some of the Bad Batch and other commanders don't all have them. Okay, I'm going to have to go back and pay more attention. Because, yeah, like, that's my comparison thought was like, Cody doesn't have one. Very quick. I'm not even going to bother putting Rex back on the handle for this because it's just his, his pistols. Rex being a little watered down, too. There we go. The other one, just a dab of water in there. Right. Boop. And boop. Slather it over. Because it's a contrast, so you can do that with it. Just being careful not to get the armor. All right. There we are. Boom. Gun's done. That was it. That's the entirety of that step. You suppose one of those pouches on the belt holds snacks? Oh, I'm sure they do. Only having a single mini carrot holder on the back for snack storage. It seems like, well, they have four. I mean, there are four little holes in there, so they can fit four carrots in. Little tin of hummus, there you go. Yes. All right, so now I need to pull up reference image. I'm now also extra confused because I just got a text message from Garvana about the car pickup tomorrow. It's like, you sent me an email saying it's not happening tomorrow. What? All right. Um, so that's not something I'm going to have to figure out. Is it happening tomorrow or not? Um, I have a Legion Ahsoka helmet. There we go. But. Okay. So this is what I was looking for. So we got. I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera with the, the ISO being as low as it is. Yeah, it's, very, it's also a very dark image. So we got the blue is still the same. It's only the helmet that's different. Yeah, you can't really see anything on that. There you go. That one's a little brighter. So the blue is persistent. It's just the helmet, bar, the orange helmet. All right, so. That means I am going to go and do the same blue. You pull up my existing one as my own reference. So Cantor blue for the markets, except on the helmet. Shaky, shaky, shaky. That's my... Oh, God, I got the wrong blue. Whoops. There we go. We Exactly. We're just filling the gaps in Wikipedia. Yep. Well, the clone troopers need snacks too. It's facts. Clone troopers need snacks too. All right. This question too. I'll use this one for now. Cantor blue on the little dab. So we'll start out with the shoulders because that's nice and easy. Let's 
same on the other side. Round. Again, might take two coats just to get this nice and smooth, but that's easy enough. So let's see when I'm not needing, not bothering with the helmet. So this is the tricky part for this guy. Is now I've got this kind of this almost A line. Um marking it down the chest which is right right where the gun is so something like that where i could have i could have fixed the problem by just building it in a sub assembly but it's not And the really nice part about this is, though I suck at freehand, I'm very, very bad at freehand. I don't do straight lines well. Um, I am just all around bad at it. But the nice thing about doing it for the clone troopers is I get to chip it afterwards and have it be battle damage. So anywhere where I have kind of screwed up and the line doesn't look very good, that's okay, because it's going to get rubbed and worn off anyway. Let's check how far down that goes. Okay, uh, it does only go down to the... Just get a little bit of a line going there. Yeah, you can't really see too far like behind the gun. So I just want enough to sell the effect of where the marking is. And then, I think we only have a bit of blue I'll need since I'm not doing the helmet. Is the sides of the little back pouch and the the wrists so let's do the wrists first i i want to be better at freehand but my problem with it is i get shaky hand real bad and so painting straight lines is just physically extremely difficult for me Box of Star Wars Legion Mandos. Dig into the EU for color choices. Nice. I think that's that's the really fun thing I think about painting Mandos is because they aren't uniform. You can have so much fun and creativity with the color choices. I mean, even in ones like you know the Death Watch have that they're all consistently red and black, but even then they have different like the areas of the the armor that are red and black differ for each one. Well behind because I'm also doing errands. The kill karma is typically by arc troopers. Okay. Okay. Go. Yeah, Alright, so we got the wrists in. And therefore, that'll be it. We're just gonna do another coat on the the pauldrons. But and I had this experience when I was painting mine for the first time too. Like as I was going through and painting them up, I reached the stage prior to this. I was like, you know, these feel just kind of meh. Like, it's fine, but it's just sort of meh. But then when I got to the point where I started adding the, the markings on, it like, it's like, oh, no, now I see it. Like, it's just because the just the plain armor. It's like, it looks fine, but something's really missing. It was missing. It was it was the arm, the, the troop markings. And it's amazing how, that's, I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've had to learn with mini painting. And it's one I struggle with to this day, which is why I have 500 half done projects strewn around my desk any given time. There is a point in most mini painting, if not all mini painting, where it's gonna look kind of crap. And it's the midpoint and it doesn't help that when people post a lot of people post their like work in progress pictures on social media they're very carefully framed and lighted and they've got it to a point of the work in progress where they've moved past that stage so it can make you feel really unmotivated and bad and like your stuff's just terrible it's like no 
it's gonna look like crap at a point. You gotta just push through it, and that that's part of the process. Trust the process. I struggle. I struggle trusting the process. I don't have trust issues in general. No, what are you talking about? That's not anything I'm working on in therapy. It's fine. It's blue. Um, there we go. Damn it. And then when I was trying to get the blue off the thing, I knocked a little bit off the shoulder back instead. Chaos. It's okay. A little bit of chaos is good for you. Um, no trust? Oh, that's easy. I just do everything myself. Exactly. Yep. ARC stands for Alternate Rock Commission. They bring battle music to the battlefields to boost morale. Yep. Um, but seriously, um, like, no, jo joking aside for a moment. Every mini, every mini will go through a stage where it does not look good because it has to. That's the way the process works of, you know, getting your bass tones on and then going through and doing your highlights and getting everything back in. Like that's, it is an inevitable part of the process. You know, it's like any kind of creative endeavor. It's like, you know, if you're, if you're an author, your first draft isn't the perfect one. Like you don't, nobody has ever sat down and knocked out a completed novel in one go. There are parts of it that are crap. But you write it, you get it done, and then you realize which parts are crap and you go and fix them. It's the same thing for the mini painting process. Um, just not trust it and not give up. And one day I might listen to myself on that advice, but today will not be that day. That's a lie. I'm never going to listen to myself. There we go. All right. See, so again, that, that, that isn't good. It's, it's not straight. It's a little wonky. It's fine. Um, but because I'm going to go back and chip it, I can target the parts that I don't like and it'll be fine. And it helps that for the clone troopers, like the parts of their armor where these markings tend to be, tend to be the shoulders, the chests, and the arms, as well as the helmet. AKA, the parts that are most likely to get shot at. Like, the parts where you're most likely to have taken a hit. So, it makes sense that those would be chipped up and damaged and dinged. How mad that? Exactly. Exactly. get the wrist on i don't need to go all the way around because you can't see the back of it i just want to make sure it looks like it goes all the way around there's optical illusions the other side When we can see the back, I do want to go a little further around. There we go. All right. So whilst that dries, we're going to do the same for our boy Rex. Well, actually, I need to, let me check my reference for Rex. Does he ha does Rex have um, the Ahsoka helmet? Yes, he does. In fact, the, uh, the very first image I found was, again, you can't really tell because it's so dark, is of Rex holding the helmet. So, yes, yes, he does. All right. Well, actually, look at, looking at that made me realize, even though my Rex I considered to be, to be done, is um, I did forget to do a part of, of him, which is I forgot to mark on his uh, his little tally marks on his armor, so I had to go back over mine and do that at some point. All right. Um, but in the interim, let's 
get his little pauldrons painted in. Yeah, it's normal, he has the little angry eyebrows on his, his it's marked onto it. The little angry brows. Okay. Pop, pop, how... Okay. I think what we're going to do is we'll just get this bit of Rex done. And I'm not going to finish Rex because Rex still has to do like the kilt and the, and the, the little highlighting on the, the black parts. We're already tipping close to three hours, which for a painting stream is about as much as I can really handle. So I think we're just going to get his his blue markings on. His, and his knee pads are a little different because he's got blue blue lines down his knees. Pop those on. Because he's fancy. He gets blue knees. And similarly, his uh, his shoulder pauldron isn't a solid blue. Just has a line down there. Okay. There we go. And I think if I remember right, the line goes kind of all the way down the arm. It does, yes. Very kind of Commander Shepard with the... With like the M7 red and white stripe. Some sort of general vibe. There we go. Let's go around his little thing. Blue knees because he gets excited about jumping and then he has to stay on the ground. Yep. Absolutely it. And his um, wrist or his, his hand guard is also blue. Ba -ba -ba. There we go. Perfect. Perfect, but you know. Same on the other arm. That goes. It's blue stripe. The blue against the white is good. It? It's a really nice coloration. They they really did well choose it with like whoever designed the color scheme for the 501st did a great, great job with it. Looks fabulous. There we go. And he doesn't actually have the markings down the front bit. So that's a little easier. What I do need to do, which I forgot to do on the others too, is the sides of the little container on the back. That's where the hummus is, is the little back container. I realize now I also forgot to do that on the other two, so let's go and do that.
that one. Hey, up. Yes, painting the butt. Excellent, exactly. That's, you know, the nice part about the being clones is you, it's all the same butt, so you, you know if it's a good butt. Which, I don't, I, I don't know why this reminded me of it, but it did. I did neglect the butt accessories. It's entirely shameful. Um, I had a wonderful time distracting myself last night by diving down the rabbit hole thanks to the thread that Sharif posted of just clips of rivals of Waterdeep. I don't know why talking about butts made me think of rivals. Draw your own conclusions from that. Um, it was, yeah, fantastic. Wonderful to, to dive through. The uh, One of the ones that got me the most was just uh, completely deadpanning in one of the intros. Uh, and Virgil is also a delight. It just made me laugh. It made me happy. All right, so let's look at these helmets. I think what I might do, actually, looking at these, I'm questioning what makes the most sense because there's the helmet design, right? I think it might make more sense to do it solid orange and then think back over the white markings because orange isn't as difficult to cover with white i think that rather than trying to yeah i think that's what i'm gonna do i think that makes more sense yeah let's go with it so we'll bust out the old troll slayer orange Shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. It's going to be a little, little vibrant, but you know, it's... actually, you know what? Is that going to be too vibrant? Do I want to do Fire Dragon Bright instead? We can find it's, really, it's almost like a reddish orange. Sorry, this is the part that I've not done, so I'm kind of questioning some decisions. You know what? Let's mix them. Let's do a 50-50 mix. I think both I think this will because neither of them is quite where I want it to be. So let's try mixing them and see if that works. Experiment time! So this is the part where I'm not any longer following the recipe. Um just because again commission request so you know what i think that's not too bad it's kind of a hybrid between the two a little more fire dragon in there i'll take that i'll take that exactly it's very important to get the right vibe exactly so it's... all right so the <clears throat> Hello, reference material again. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. So it goes all the way. Okay, so it's the little side tubey bits. Don't get it. So this part gets it. And this part gets it. And then the top 
Here. Let's try to find like a side. Okay, so it doesn't go all the way around. So it only goes like a mask. So I was like, okay, how far around do I go with this? So we go about to here, it looks like. Oh, and what about the top crest bit? Da, 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 top crest bit is different depending on which image I look at, um, but it seems like most commonly to be orange. Okay. Mm -hmm. So go there and then do in the side. Yeah, I think I think this was the the, the right way to do it. Now we've got the base orange on the face, and so now I'll be able to go back and paint in the markings with a detail brush. Does it have the white ridge? That is also orange and goes doesn't go all the way around okay so this part also is orange okay okay we do the other one and yeah looking at it on it i think that's that's a good enough orange I, i'm happy with that I'm happy with the mix. I think that was the right way to go, rather than trying to just slap on one of them and call it a day. Part of me still feels like maybe I should have mixed some red in there, but I'm going to call this good. Side. I just realized I think it reached the end of this page of the music too. Oh crap! Leans a little too hard and uh, snaps the glue because they're very lightly glued on because I want to be able to remove them from the base easily. Uh, not quite that easily though. Tried to do a runner. That's okay, he's stable enough. Yeah, stable enough to just barely function. That's what my therapist says about me. <laughs> Don't function. All right. He did indeed almost fly off the handle. Don't do the same thing with Rex. And Rex is actually going to be the easiest of these to do, ironically, because he actually has the little angry brows from his original helmet design sculpted in, which also work for the Ahsoka design. So his actually is uh, slightly easier to do. There's some guidance for it. I didn't quite... I ran into a little bit, but it's fine. All right, so that's the orange on. So now, go back through with the white. Da, 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 da. Find that's a good image of the helmet. All right, so you can kind of see there we got the little diamond, two diamonds, and that's like line. All right, okay. 
stay there. I find a nice thin brush. Right back here. And here we go. This is going to be interesting. Wish me luck. Let's see how I can pull this off. Tiny bit out there. Um, and um, let me zoom the camera a bit so you can see a little easier what I'm doing. Just a bit more. It doesn't need to be perfect because I'm going to chip this later on. Just, I think it's a little, the line's a little too thin to get the effect. It's just, now I've got a guideline, it's a little easier. It's not perfect, but it's not awful. And at this point, I'm going to take not awful. Now, the trickier part is going to be trying to make it symmetrical. I didn't do, but again, I can fix some of this with chipping later. Let's add to the little angry brow bit. This one's also difficult because since this is the one where the super glue gave way, I'm also trying to like hold it onto the base at the same time. Which is why I started with this one because it's going to be the most difficult. So if I can get this one down, the others should seem much easier by comparison. But it's not ideal, but it's also not awful. Let's just try and get that little diamondy bit in. See, everything went fine until I started deviating from the recipe, and now it's my problem with cooking. Yeah, you know, I tried to get creative with it. I'm gonna call that good enough. It's not ideal, but you know what? You get the uh, you get the vibe. You get the intent behind it, and oftentimes that's that's the most important thing. Is if you can communicate the idea, then that's it's often good enough. So I tell people who keep apologizing for their spelling online, like as long as the, the intent of your, your what you're trying to say is coming across, this is not a grammar class. It's, it's fine. It doesn't matter. We aren't judging your English home. We'll come back to Rex later. So let's go on to our second trooper.
The orange markings given the carrot affinity earlier. Yep. Oh yeah, autocorrect can definitely be a pain. Or as uh, people so often and so accurately say, autocorrect can be a ducking nightmare. that let's get the other little diamond in this one was much easier because i wasn't trying to hold them onto the base at the same time it's the, the you know the, the lesson there should be i should have probably stopped and fixed the base first but uh that is uh something that requires thought and focus and planning and sensibility all of which are things i do not possess so there we go there's our second one whose markings look a little a little better. I'm much happier with that one. So, with that being done, we have one last thing to do before I wrap the stream because I got to go and walk heroes. I'm not. I'm not going to bother doing the highlights on the gun today. The one other thing I do want to do, just because it's fun, is the sponge chipping. I want to just demonstrate this. So there's that. We got a nice little piece of, of sponge. Let me zoom the camera back out. Yep, little piece of sponge. So we're just going to dip that in our paint, drop it off, and then we're just going to go just lightly, probably a bit more lightly than that, get some chipping going over the shoulder markings. Let's do a bit this side. I do have to be careful because I tend to go overboard with, with sponge chipping. Kind of overdo it, so I've got to be careful. Do the same thing all over the face. Get a little bit there in the, the chest. So there you go. As you can see where some of those chest lines were a little wonky. The chipping helps. Focus and planning. Austin's long lost follow up to sense and sensibility. Yep. Way less, way less popular for some reason. Can't imagine why. Yeah, so we've got that nice, like, worn-looking shoulder pad. No worries, Martimus. Take care. Thank you very much for coming by. Now you're just completely off the thing, so may as well just uh, take advantage of it. Let's use the little more angular part of it now. It's actually more sensible to do this with tweezers so you don't get paint all over your hands, but I don't care. Well, there we go. I could probably go a little more with it than that, but I have a te like I said, I have a tendency to overdo this stage. I'm going to stop myself. And then the last thing for these two, other than, again, the, the gun highlights, I'm going to do that off stream, is let's grab another little bit of sponge. And the Eshin Bray, which this is going to be for the general armor chipping. General armor chipping. All right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Dump it in the paint. This one I can do straight out of the pot because I don't use a mix. And let's take this guy and just again, just lightly dab onto armor so we can start getting we can kind of see the yeah, probably a little too heavy with that one but you can see where it's now starting to get that dinged up armor and i don't mind going a little heavier with these because especially again given how late in the series this is going to be, given that he requested me to do the, the Ahsoka armor helmets. They probably would have pretty uh, pretty dinged up armor this, this deep into the Clone Wars. So 
There we go. I'm not going to overdo it. I think that's good enough. So now we've got that little bit of extra breakup on him. So he looks like he's uh, he's been in the walls for a while. Yep. Do the same thing on the other one. Hey, hey, Verva, welcome in, welcome in. chest Fine. arms there we go i'm gonna call that good enough for him as well so we got that nice shipping and you know what i said i wasn't gonna do it but that went faster than i expected because i tried not to overdo it so you know what let's finish up the guns while um with a, a super glue. we're gonna just, we're gonna pop this guy back in space first i'm not gonna finish rex because rex has the additional work to do on the the side but Um, anyone wanting to kind of follow along, the only difference for Rex is going to be, I'm just going to use some, like, deep blues to put a little highlighting on his, uh, his kilt. And that's actually the only difference, but, and, and the, the armor pads, that's literally the only difference for Rex is he gets a little bit of highlighting on the black. Just because there's so much more of it. Otherwise, yeah, it took a little longer than I would, because like, streaming always takes a bit longer because I'm chatty and, and demonstrating stuff, but what, about three hours to get them done. It's not too bad. And it wouldn't be, it would be probably even more productive. Again, if I wasn't streaming and chatting, it would have gone faster. Um, and if you do, like I said, these, these are the only ones that come in the core set. But what I did when I painted mine as well was I had also built the, uh, the Obi-Wan Hello there, pack. And so I did the two stormtroopers in that at the same time. And that speeds everything up because batch painting is always faster. So all right. what we're going to do now is it doesn't need to go extensive. We're just going to take a little bit of filigree silver by Reaper. I'm just going to run just a little bit, just over some of the edges of the gun. I've totally forgot. You're the one I literally just tried to glue back onto your base. What am I thinking? It's going to hold you here now you don't need to go back on your base so just a little bit of edging thing just to get a little bit more detail onto the gun you not knock you over you could really kind of worry about this and go super super intricate and just make sure you only get the raised edges i don't think it's worth it for the clone troopers to be honest i think just running the brush lightly over just to get some of the raised edges gets enough of the effect that it's a metal gun that's been in use for a while that's all it takes yeah like that's it that's good enough doesn't need any more than that just gonna do a little bit of cleanup with some corvus black on here Build a little bit of white and that's actually that's honestly it like i'm going to go over it and just take a look through later on just to make sure i can't see any places i need to tidy up anymore especially again because it's a commission but otherwise it's done they're done whole thing start to finish one session Like I said, that's gonna that same process is gonna work for the troopers that come in Obi Wan's kit, just with yellow for the markings. It's gonna work for the clone commandos that are gonna come in uh, Barris's kit that comes out next week, I believe. Um, it'll work for stormtroopers when that comes out. Same process. Stormtroopers will actually be even easier because you don't have to do the squad markings. You just get just you can get to the white stage and boom, you're done. Uh, but that's it. We're done. So thank you very much, everyone, for hanging out. Uh, that's why I'm going to wrap the stream for today. Uh, I will be back next week um, where we're going to paint Anakin to finish this squad out. I'm, I'm going to finish up Rex off stream, like I said. And then tomorrow, not tomorrow, next week, next Saturday for another 
hashtag Shatterday uh, stream, which will once again very kindly be sponsored by Atomic Mass Games, we're going to paint a mannequin, and then this squad will be done. Um, as for myself, um, I say for myself, like that's not me doing it. As for further on myself, I don't know if I'm going to do any more streams this weekend. Um, it's a little wonky mentally. Um, I will definitely be back on Monday. I'm going to do Monday evening stream like usual. Don't know what I'm streaming yet. Um, just bear in mind, it will be a shorter stream because we get to start recording Quartz of Crystal again on Monday and I'm so happy. So ready for this. Um, but let me take a quick look and see who's on that I can throw the raid to. Kyrus, who's right behind my chair right now because he says it's time for his move. So let's take a quick look. New large of Star Wars Carrot Lore. That's what we determined is, uh, is Carrot Lore. That's the most important thing. Um, oh, wow. There's not a lot of people I know on. Uh, let's take a look at some stuff. Where do I want to go? Let's go and let's go. Let's go, right, DJ. We'll go with DJ Knight. He's been going for how long? Okay, he's been going on for like an hour and 20, and DJ goes for like six hours at the time. So that's, that's, that's where we'll go. We'll go hang out with DJ Knight. Um, but, uh, uh, there we go. All right. Um, so, yeah, and again, uh, exclamation mark, shout point, and thing. I'm sure so hard. Just hit the thing. Um, do go and click, click through. Check the link, um, read up on Shatterpoint, like I said, I think it's fantastic. I think it's worth your time investigating. But even if it's like not your thing, go click the link and check it anyway, because that helps it genuinely helps me out. But and also, yeah, I, I genuinely love this stuff. Like it's been fantastic. I've gotten a I've genuinely have become a better painter working on it. So uh check it out. Take a look at the link. Um, I'll post up more stuff like the finished photos and whatnot on Twitter later. If Twitter's working, who knows? If not, it'll be on Blue Sky. It'll be on the Discord. It'll I'll post it wherever I can think of. Um, I'm going to go walk Kiros, who is staring at me with guilt inducing eyes. As he is, excuse me, as he is want to do. And I'm going to go find some food because uh, I kind of haven't eaten today. So I should go do that. Food is helpful and should, should be a thing. Um, so yeah, again, thank you all for being here. Thank you for showing the support. It really does mean a lot to me that people show up, especially for, yeah, again, sponsor streams like this. That's that's when it's most impactful. So it means a lot that people hang out today. So thank you if you were here. Otherwise, again, have a good holiday weekend if you're in the US. Hopefully you have some time off coming up soon. If not, enjoy the rest of your weekend, unless you're working it, in which case I hope your weekend goes quickly. And I'll catch you later. Captain's off deck. Bye-bye.